weren't scared. There was nothing to be scared of. We were in my back garden and we have the spider hammer. There's one. Got it. Told you it'd work. The guard dog's been sick now. That'll be all the 18 spiders he's got. I wonder how long it would take for the flies to suck up that big puddle. About, um, about a week? No, more like an hour. So you see, flies don't have stomachs. It goes in one end and shoots straight out the other. Like a jet ski. Ah! It's a werewolf! Ah! It's a Dracula! It's a Frankenstein's monster! It's a William! Evening, girls. Bit scared, you did I? I'm getting hurt, get him, getting even, ain't a sin. Sister Mel and brother will make him take a bit of pills. Sir, I'm warm, warm. It's a summer for the storm, for the storm. Oh, look out, world. Your sandwich is cold, your tea's gone cold, and now you're getting old. You know the boy with the camera, he's gonna scam you. Harder than a stone, and he's gonna be. Gonna get you, William. I'd like to see you try, Alice. My name's Alistair. I'm a boy. Look, I've got toenails in my pocket to prove it. Ew, what's that smell? Sorry, I think I may have peed on the biscuits. William, you wanna cut shortbread? <laughs> if this is well behaved, I am a teapot. But, Daddy. Will was trying to murder us. Your mother is having a personal moment with her new extractor fan and she does not want to be disturbed. <laughs> Mum loves that extractor fan more than me. Oh, for goodness sake. Who left this sick here to be trodden in? Why is your mum in love with her new extractor fan? To stop the house smelling of her cooking. Is that a good thing? I thought she was a famous cook. A famously bad one, yes. We've checked the sewage system and can't find a leak anywhere. But that awful smell. Morning. We're just boiling up a few bones from my latest book, Smells from a Soup Kitchen. Fancy some curried black egg and chihuahua chowder? Is that the smell? have a really important date tomorrow. Randy, Andy. Some of us are trying to get our beauty sleep. Some of us need it. <laughs> right. Who said you could have my cat? But I'm cold. He's my hot water bottle. He's mine. But in that case, you want this too. Oof. Oh, no, he's your cat now, Alice. They've asked for it now. Hi, Will. Just give it in the stairs. What are those? Superstition. Will's playing rugby tomorrow. I'll nip the lucky pot chops. You give Mel never bird. and I'm freezing cold and dirty. And I'll be needing your bedroom all day today. But I do too. I've got friends here. And do any of you need a full-length mirror to prepare yourself for the hottest day of your life? No, but like I keep saying, take the mirror out of my room and put it in yours. <laughs> that would make your life far too easy, Alice. Find somewhere else to have your sad little secret meeting. Oh, and somewhere secret might be a change. Somewhere sad, like in your head. I heard that. No one will find us in here. I'm taking Will to rugby. Any of you lads want to come? No. No, no thank, thank you, you, Mr Fury. How did you know we were in here? Er, uh, this. Oh, by the way, Alistair, someone stole William's lucky pork chops last night, so he's feeling a bit scared. 
Get rid of that for me, will you? What is it? Proof that pot chop revenge work. When Will gets scared before a match, he projectile vomits in the car. So last night's revenges were good warm-ups for the main revenge. So, any ideas? How about we cut the brakes on William Spike, then tell him there are naked women at the bottom of a steep hill. So he cycles down the hill really fast and splat! No? Okay. We could cut the brakes on Mel's bike and tell they're a naked man. No! We want to scare them. Okay. Ugly naked people. Can we just forget about naked people, please? I saw a film once on Frankenstein's monster. That was scary. He was a huge beast who had scars on his face and he could eat a whole sheep in one bite. Was he naked? Only for the first 20 minutes and after that he wore a cloth cap. Well, that's all right then. I like the idea, but does anyone know how to make a monster? No. no. It's a shame Blue Peter haven't done a programme on it yet. Hello children, today we are going to show you how to make a fully working Frankenstein's monster. All you need is some used loo roll, some sticky back plastic, a scary mask, a set of old clothes and a beating heart of a blood curdling monster. I don't know how to say this, Aaron, but that's brilliant. Really? Greetings, Revengers everywhere. Glorious leader here with news of a sensational new revenge. Scary Frankenstein's monster revenge on Will and Mel for scaring our pants off in the tent last night with the wailing ghost joke and the zombie face pack. <laughs> Now that's what I call scary. I wouldn't be scared of him, not unless he suddenly came to life. That's the whole point. He's going to come to life. He's going to walk and talk just like Frankenstein's monster. How? He's stuffed with newspaper. I just thought of a problem. In the film, they use lightning to bring the monster to life. But if you look outside now, it's not even raining. It could be though, couldn't it? Meaning what? Well, you must have heard of a rain dance. Oh no, not dancing! I can't go under there! Then drop your umbrella! No! I mean... Doing the underarm twirls, it's the girl's part. Just throw it away. Look, without rain, there can be no lightning. And without lightning, there can be no revenge. Can you two ballerinas shut up? I can't hear a word my boyfriend's saying. Bit of a change to the schedule, little brothers. Mel's just leaving for her date, so Ralph and Aaron have popped indoors to pay back for the soaking, leaving yours truly to get the monster walking without lightning. Andy's here. I'm going out, everyone. Wish me luck. Before you go, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, fellow Revengers, I have cleverly given the monster remote controlled feet. Aaron and Ralph have got the controls and are now going to edge each car forward so that it looks like Eric's walking. Look, do you want me to beep it? I could. Just, it'll be like that warning beep you get when a lorry reverses, only I'd be warning people that a monster's going forward. We don't want to warn anyone, Aaron. This revenge will only work if Mel and Will think it's a real monster and it takes them by surprise. Now give it a try. Gently. <laughs> Gently! Whoops. Sorry. Uh. At the time, it just seemed like a disaster. But later that night, I realised it was much, 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 much worse than that. Ah! 
It's been a very weird day since we crashed the monster. Obviously, me and the Revengers spent most of the day hiding from Mum. But then, Dad and Will came home. <gasps> what happened? Uh, I must have got a cold when I went out last night in my underpants. I meant to William. He'd broken his leg and Dad took himself off to bed feeling sick. Oh, poor me. I wish I felt better, love, but I don't. You couldn't fetch me some lightly buttered farmhouse bread thickly sliced with the drop of that delicious scotch broth that you make so well, could you? <clears throat> you don't sound very sick. Oh, I am. I'm very, very sick. <laughs> and then... Mum went looking for the milk vandals and pulled a muscle in her back. Stop it, little boy! Your milk has ruined my whole carpet! It was an accident, Mummy. No, not the broken broom! My point is that the same weird things happened to the monster. It broke its leg, fell into sick, and it twisted its back. It also got covered in milk like mail, but that was a bit different. But what does this all mean? Hello, Alice. Oh, it's you. Mum said she saw a monster in the shed tonight. Did she? You know she did. So I've come to tell you a bedtime story. Is it a nice one? It's a friendly warning story about the perils of playing with monsters. And I suggest all you revengers watching at home listen to. Once upon a time, in this very house, there lived a mad scientist called Frankenstein. Is this a true story? These are his actual safety goggles that we found in the cellar. And this mad scientist built a monster. In this house? In this very room, Alistair. His actual feet touched this floor and they lived together as man and monster for 30 years until the monster died. And because he was like a pet to Frankenstein, he buried the monster in the garden. Oh, garden! And it's said that he who brings the monster back to life will be strangled by the monster and his family will suffer a run of really bad luck. But we made Eric. We didn't bring Frankenstein's monster back to life. He did do that rain dance. You mean you think that dance might have? Obviously. And now the spirit of the monster lives on in Eric. You're not scared, are you, Alice? No. Night, night. Sleep tight. Don't let the monsters bite. Oh, no, what have we done? Did you hear that? And that, oh, no. Both the feet, I can hear them coming up the stairs. I'm not scared, obviously, it's just... Those were giant footsteps! It's the monster! It has to be! A stupid rain dance has brought its spirit back to life in Eric. And it's coming to get me! Help! I think my heart stopped. Oh, no, it's still there. Typical of my family. Nobody comes to save me. Hello? I was hoping that daylight would bring relief from the nighttime terrors, but I was wrong. 
The run of bad luck started by me and the Revengers mucking about with monsters just kept coming. Who are Well, it is his name. That's not my name! My name's Alistair! I'm a boy! I've got toenails in my pocket to prove it! Go and get your father! <sighs> she doesn't really need me, Will. I'm sick. I've got pains in all my major organs. She told me to throw the TV remote out if you didn't come. Right. But if I get pneumonia and die, it's your fault. Hey, it can't be. Everything's always Alistair's fault, isn't it? Good point. If he hadn't been making all that noise in the tent, I wouldn't have had to go outside in my pants and shout at him. <sighs> Alistair must have put those there as well. I didn't do it. Well, if none of us did it, then... There's only one explanation, right, Mel? Right, William. It must have been the monster. Stop, William, please. Maybe we did activate the curse of Frankenstein with our rain dance. Do you mean to check if Eric's still in the shed? Are you joking? Go in there with that thing. It's going to strangle me, remember? Look, you want to get rid of it, yeah? There's only one way, and it's not pretty. Pass that on to Ralph and Aaron, will you? Tonight, you need to dig up the monster's bones from our back garden and rebury them at the allotment at the end of the road. Why? Because there's a pet cemetery there, and I've already told you that Frankenstein thought of his monster as a pet. But it's really dark there. Can't it be somewhere less spooky? I don't make up the rules, Alice. Sorry. So to get rid of the monster, we've got to dig up its old bones and bury them in an allotment so its spirit can rest in peace forever. I'm not even scared, are you? No. What sort of spade is that? We don't have a garden. Mum grows carrots in a window box. And that's a tree, and that's another tree, and that's... Alistair! I've struck bone. Right, that's all the bones we buried. Aaron, get it covered. Ralph, keep watch for vampires. I'll do the prayers. For all the bones we relayed, someone get rid of the monster I made. Little height, here's a tip. Never mess with monsters. Last night, I thought I'd buried Frankenstein's curse for good. This morning, I've been woken with the terrible news that there has been a death in the family. What have I done to deserve this? Tell me. I mean, am I a bad person, Constance? Why me? Why now? I'm still only halfway through my soup book. It's not fair. Maybe it's moles. Moles? When have you ever seen a mole big enough to dig a hole? That size? Maybe it's alien spaceships landing then. Or dinosaur footprints. Don't mock me, William. That hole is so not funny. Well, whatever made it, I bet you wouldn't think it were Alistair. Alistair? Well, it always is. Well, if it was, Alistair, he'll wish he was dead, too. <sighs> Who's dead? One of great Uncle Crawford's parrots. Oh, not Long John Silver. He was almost as old as great Uncle Crawford himself. And how are you feeling? Oh, um, what's she doing here? What do you think? There's a family funeral to go to. Oh, well, in that case, I'm still feeling a bit poorly. Eh? If Dad don't have to go, then I can't possibly go with these crutches. Anyway, I don't want to waste my time saying goodbye to a parrot. Your great uncle Crawford devoted his life to his parrot sanctuary, and Long John Silver was his companion. The least you can do is show your respects. Oh, well, I can't possibly go because I've got to find a new boyfriend. 
Can you believe it, Mum? Andy hasn't even had the good manners to phone after I stood him up on our date the other night. Well, did you not tell him you didn't open the door because you had milk on your head? No. Well, nice try, both of you. But you're still coming. Oh, a cup of tea in bed would be nice. And some nice fresh crumpets. Oh, only if it's not too much trouble, Mum. And while you're up there, perhaps you could take in this nice fresh bowl of strychnine noodle soup. Oh, it's you. Oh, hello, Mel. You no, know, I've been ringing for quite some time now. All night, in fact. In fact, two nights. I think your doorbell's broken. Oh, no, it's fine, Andy. If I'm honest, though, it's a bit of a bad time at the moment. See, the family's just lost a much-loved parrot. Plus, I find you a little bit clingy hanging around my doorstep all the time, so if you don't mind, I'm dumping you. What? I bought you some... Yeah. Mel! Mel! What? Well, I shall say goodbye to you, Long John Silver, first and best. We had a few laughs together, and there wasn't much about me you didn't know. And sometimes, when we had our long chats, I'd forget that you were a bird. Except when you started pecking on the window to try and get out. Or scuffling about on my newspaper. And the things you used to say. You had the biggest gob on you of any parrot I've ever known. Anyway. The old family's come out to see you off. Onto that great silver perch in the sky. Been a good Did you have to bring Mr. E? I shall miss him. He and the parrot were friends. One last. Mr. Grab him! One day you And no swearing. How do my old soup bones get here? <laughs> I have been taken for a mug. The whaling. The bones in the garden. The scratched hood. Frankenstein's safety goggles. And those heavy footsteps on the stairs. That's the monster, it has to be. Was never the monster coming to get me in my bed. It was Mel and Will paying me back for the bird on the pillow and Lucky Pot Chop revenges. Right. It's time for a council of war. Right, let's start with the swearing in. I'm ruddy well going to duff them up. So I'm ruddy I. And ruddy me. Good. Let us sit on the carpet of war and discuss strategies. Who seeks the helmet of war? We could tie bricks to Mel and Will's shoes and chuck them in the river. Why? What harm have their shoes ever done us? I was rather assuming Mel and Will would still be in them. No, no, no. They tried to scare me to death, so we're going to scare them to death back. How are we going to do that, then? With the monster. It's what I should have done all along. Look at that fellow Revengers. Is that scary or what? Now what? Have you got enough space under that coat to hold the karaoke machine and the microphone close enough to your mouth? Yeah. Can I have some more chocolate? If you keep eating chocolate, Sanjay, you turn into a real monster. OK, so you know the signal to make your entrance? Yep. I still think a turkey is a stupid choice. It's the only animal I can do. And you know your lines? I wrote them on his sleeve. I am Frankenstein's monster! And I am back to life for real this time! And I am here to eliminate Alistair Fury! Then you grab my neck and I fall down dead and they're so scared that they burst into tears and promise to never scare me again. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were in here. What do you want, Alice? Ah, oh, nothing. Aaron fancy a turkey sandwich. You love turkey, don't you, Aaron? I do. Gobble, 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 gobble. I wonder who that might be. Answer it, Alistair. Find out. Find out. Frankenstein's 
monster come to get me? I am Frankenstein's monster! <laughs> oh, a terrible monster. It's wiping its feet. <laughs> I always wipe my feet. I've come back to life for real this time and I'm here to eliminate Alistair Fury. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Eliminate, 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 oh, eliminate, 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 Bravo, Brud. Bravo. You're going to have to do a lot better than that to scare us. You mean you weren't even fooled a little bit? What do you think, Alice? Oh, no more, please. My nerves can't take it. <laughs> eh? Isn't that Great Uncle Crawford's parrot? Oh, I feel brave because I'm fresh from the grave. You mean Long John Silver? It can't be. He's dead. Come out now, Great Uncle Crawford. Was that what you boys wanted? Perfect. It was lucky Long John Silver had an identical twin, wasn't it? Too right! <laughs>